So thank you very much for allowing me to be here this evening. Um, my name is Diane Valley, and some of you may know me. I own Carter Greenery, which is at Mercantile Wharf. I was there for 22 years. And every day I would walk under the expressway, and I promised myself if they ever took that down, I would work to make that a beautiful <coughs> greenway. And that is my interest in the greenway because um, I know it can be a wonderful gift to our city. I also am a Charlestown resident, and um, for people in Charlestown, we walk the greenway. If we need to see green space, we have to either go there or to go to the river. And so it's a very valuable piece for any of us that are urban dwellers. And I know many of the people in the North End, because I did business here for so many years, if you want grass, it's either this or the Christopher Columbus Park. So um, I appreciate the North End issues quite well. Um, I like Aaron. I think he is a wonderful representative for the North End. On this one issue, we do see it differently, and I do respect his opinion. However, I am asking you to consider Peter Durant's bill. Um, it's a non-partisan um, bill. We're trying to make this as just a good governance issue. Um, the difference on the Greenway is that this is state land. There are very few other nonprofits that um, operate on state land. And when we did go to the State House last month to testify, the Greenway Leadership Conservancy um, uh, board member testified that they are looking for $11 million from the state. So they intend to continue to take state dollars from the Commonwealth. And my question is, is are we really getting our best value? Um, and I want you to also understand that what Aaron was talking about, about the DCR, is that the money that is set aside, that the Conservancy already took, would be given to DCR in this new bill. So that there would be funding set aside, and DCR has agreed to accept this. So we do have a different point of view. And um, I do agree that the North End does deserve the best parks. So I'd like to um, tell you that I chaired the Greenway Gardens with Joe Kunkel, who is here with me this evening. And we did this with 300 volunteers. We were, um, Joe was an employee of the Mass Horticultural Society, and I was a trustee. And we did six <coughs> acres that went from the Moakley Bridge to South Station. And these are Veronica plants. This is on parcel 19. And we did quite a wonderful job. I raised $300,000 myself from April until July. And I can tell you there's some wonderful, generous people that really wanted to support this greenway. These are astilbes that are on um, parcel 21, which is in front of Atlantic uh, Wharf. And these are coreopsis. And th this is the nature that we put it. This is one season's worth of growth of what we did. I also am very involved in private-public partnership. I'm president of the Monument Square Neighborhood Association, which Sal is a wonderful supporter of. And we work with the National Park Service and the city of Austin. I work to um, do a collaborative effort, and we replaced all the trees around the monument. We do plantings. Um, I run the Halloween Parade, which Sal will tell you is the largest Halloween parade in the city. We don't advertise it because we want it to be a neighborhood event, but I would tell you, you are all welcome, and it is fabulous. Please come in costume. <coughs> and um, we work with the National Park Service. Like on September 11th, we did a commemoration, and we put a flag in to commemorate <coughs> each person that died on September 11th. So we have a wonderful working relationship with the National Park Service. I'm also president of the Friends of the Training Field, and we just raised enough money to have all the trees pruned and fertilized because the Parks and Recreation Department of the city has many other parks to manage. But we find this is one of the most important urban green spaces, and we want a higher level of maintenance. So I do a lot of work in the community. Also, when I was on the board of Mass Horticultural Society, we had to cancel the Spring Flower Show, which is the oldest flower show in the country. And I felt badly because um, 
you know, what would be the tradition in Boston not to have a flower show? And I created events called Step Into Spring. And we did the flower arrangements along the greenway in the lobbies. And we did the landscape displays at the mall at Chestnut Hill. It was so successful the first year that the mall actually enjoyed 11% gain in their retail sales. And the second year, J. J Jill, which is a retail store, had the highest sales in the country. And then Simon Malls has awarded it the best um, partnership <coughs> event in the entire country. Simon Mall is the biggest mall operator in the country. So I do a lot of this work, and I'd like to be able to do it in my own hometown as much as I like Chestnut Hill. So the question that has always come up is, when Mass Horticultural Society was asked to leave the Greenway, um, we wanted to work, of course, to continue to collaborate with the um, Rose Fitzgerald Kennedy Greenway. And they have a mission that on paper sounds like we would be aligned. And many of us attended the meetings and tried to reach out and to participate. And the vision is to be a first-class urban park. But as we continued going to the meetings, we weren't feeling like we were on the same page and we weren't getting the results that we envisioned for a, a garden and a beautiful green space. Because this is the kind of um, green space that we have and it's not isolated. There have not been more plantings. And then we got serious concerns about the governance. Um, I'm sure you've been following it that Richard Davey, who's the Secretary of Transportation, has requested more tra um, transparency. And he has told the Conservancy to wean themselves from public dollars. And the um, Attorney General's office has also had to ask for transparency. We are talking about a nonprofit with state dollars. It's unusual to have this kind of request. And with that transparency, we had an opportunity to understand the numbers that were not forthcoming before. The Conservancy enjoys a $4.7 million budget. That's an enormous amount of money to do what is being done here. And that includes just 15 acres. And they have 35 employees. Just so you know what the difference is, is the Boston Public Garden is about 20 acres and the common is 40 acres. Until recently, with Henry Lee, who was the head of the president of the Friends of the Boston Public Garden, he <coughs> did it himself in collaboration with the Boston Parks and Recreation. But now they have one employee, and the Greenway has 35. Their salary is $2.2 million, which is hard to understand because they also actually have a uh, contract with Work Inc. for $514,000. And they do a very good job of picking up the trash and mowing the grass and um, removing the snow. So after the transportation department um, really had some issues with it and they don't have a, a desire to do this, Work Inc. took over and they do a very good job and that's $514,000. But um, the Conservancy has a different priority. They pay three times the amount of money for public relations. They have three different public relations firms for a nonprofit agency that's trying to run a garden. And they actually only spend 1% in real plants on the Greenway, in a place that's called the Greenway. So that is a concern for us. So we are asking for fiscal responsibility. They've had $16 million. And they've had three years to do this. And they have state funds, and only 1% of it is going to the plants. That's seven cents per square foot. And you all know that you can't buy a plant or a tree for seven cents a square foot. But they do have 47% that's going to salaries, which is $3.36 per square foot. They have different priorities. Um, you would hear the executive of the Greenway to say that they are experimenting. Well, they're experimenting with our time and our money. This is one of the experiments. This is an artificial skating rink that they installed in Parcel 21 that really was not well attended, but it did cost a fair amount of money. This is another experiment that they did. 
This is a roundup that was done in front of the Intercontinental Hotel. That cost real money. That was not plants that they put in the ground for your benefit of ours. This was real money. And I can tell you the Intercontinental, intercontinental residents were not too pleased. They have the expense of these wonderful fountains. However, when they do break, they go back to the state and say they want more money. So it's a mixed message of how the conservancy operates. Their initiative seems to be to do this carousel. The carousel <coughs> is a wonderful feature. I actually offered to the conservancy because I had a wonderful experience raising money for these gardens. And I said to the conservancy, it's the worst economic times in our history. I know people that can't afford to take their kids to that carousel. I'll raise the money and I'll get you to, so that you can offer it for free. And the conservancy was not interested. And I said, well, okay, how about if I raise the money and we can work with you to put some beautiful planting boxes around the carousel instead of that police barricade and help the children understand what horticulture is all about. And the conservancy wasn't interested at all. They are interested in a $3 million carousel, which is an enormous amount of money for a carousel. And I have a degree in elementary and special ed. And I can tell you, kids that ride carousels are from two to six years old. And it's about kinesthetics. It's about up and down and going around. And I don't know if $3 million is the investment that we need there. But they have a different priority. So they compare themselves to Millennium Park, which is in Chicago. And that's how they justify their expenses. And Millennium Park is a magnificent park that has 3 million visitors a year. It is generating cash for the city of Chicago. They have cultural events, they have jazz festivals, they have restaurants, they have a skating rink that actually works. They have a beautiful cloud gate. It's a wonderful park. We don't have 3 million visitors. And the Conservancy compares themselves to Bryant Park. And if you're ever in New York, I suggest that you go to Bryant Park. They have thousands of people there. They have thousands of chairs. The chairs never get stolen. And they have magnificent horticultural planting, which is the big draw. Because that park was there before it got planted out. And it ended up being like a terrible place. But because they have the new management with the planting. It's quite sensational. And they have millions of visitors. They have cultural events. They have restaurants and a library. They have activities. They even have uh, restrooms. And this is what the Conservancy is basing their budget on. The North End, I would tell you, I think you have wonderful parks here. But you got them before the Conservancy arrived. The Department of Transportation built these out, and they were in place when the Conservancy took over. And they are terrific parks because you have seating, you have a pergola, you have grass, you have water feature, and you have planting beds. And they should look like this. This is what Bryant Park looks like. But this is what it looks like. I was there this morning. These pictures are there this morning. This is what you're getting for plantings on your parcels in the North End. This is what it looks like. It's clean. I could never criticize working. I think they do a good job. But this is what your parcels look like. You did get some planters. And I am grateful that out of the 1% of that budget, you did get some planters. And they are lovely. But they are just a speck along the greenway. This is a mere 1%. This is mostly what you see. And you're lucky you have a few of these. However, most of it is really not very attractive. So it's clean, it's usable, but it's a bit barren. And it's $4.7 million. And you can say, well, it's winter. Except when I walked home, this is what we see in Charlestown. I did this with volunteers. This is the nature of the displays that we have on the same morning. So we are making a request for an action. We would like the, the time has come for the funds to be used wisely 
And we like to collaborate with communities. I have a lot of experience of doing these community events, and I think that the North End has been a bit frozen out of the Greenway. And we would like this urban green space to be what we all dreamed it would be. So we'd like you to have a consideration to change the management and to have a Friends of the Greenway. We'd like you to terminate the lease of the Conservancy and have a Friends group. The DCR actually manages tons of properties <coughs> that they have effective Friends groups. And I suggest that you go and you take a look at them. They are all over the state. It is not easy work, but with the help of a community, you get a better value add than any other opportunity. And this is a proven model. We are not making anything up here. And in, the Greenway can be very beautiful in your parks in every season. Christopher Columbus Park is an example. You have 10 years of success there. You have a very active friends group. <coughs> they have 200 members. They have 50 very active members. I see people every hour of the day out there picking up trash. They have beautiful plantings. And they want to collaborate with the friends of the Greenway group. The Paul Revere Park is a DCR park. If you walk to the end of the Greenway and cross through the locks by the North Station, you will see these beautiful parks that are managed by the DCR. And they are beautifully, lushly planted parks. City Square Park, if you walk a little bit further to my neighborhood, is another DCR park. And it is managed with a friends group. And they do wonderful events. It is a true gem. It is so valued by my community. People go there for so many different reasons. And it's just a wonderful place that we really think is uh, fabulous because it is wonderful landscaping. So you might say, well, how are you going to do this? You know, where, where are you going to get the help? I have a letter from the Garden Federation of Massachusetts. They have 12,700 members. And they have written a letter to the state to say that they support a Friends of a Greenway group. There are master gardeners that take these courses, and they are required to do community service. The, and when Joe and I were doing the Greenway, we found that those people really wanted to be in Boston so that they don't have to transport to other places for volunteer events. And people had a visceral reaction to being able to work on the Greenway and feel like they were part of the city and being part of something that was so valuable. So we would like you to consider changing it. Aaron created this bill before we knew a lot of things. And we would hope that it could be adapted so that it could, instead of costing us over a million dollars an acre, and I ask you, are you getting over a million dollars an acre worth of return on it, where there's not much green on the Greenway, and have a new tried approach that actually works in other parts of the city and is very successful. The money from the Conservancy would revert back to the DCR, so they will be funded. And then we will create a friends group so that you will have a beautiful space like Christopher Columbus Park. And Joe Kunkel is here. And Joe Kunkel is the past president of the Perennial Plants Association. He has gone around the country, and he has built gardens for people, and they have sustained themselves and they have sustained because of a friends group. And I don't know if it's appropriate, but if Joe would like to say a few thing, few words, or when we have questions, people could direct questions to Joe. Uh, I, I think maybe people can choose to direct questions okay. to Joe. I want to allow plenty of time for plenty of discussion. Okay. So I think that you're very lucky. You have a very caring committee here. You have a very caring neighborhood. You have wonderful representation. Aaron and Sal are very interested in the best interests of the community. But I can tell you, on a horticultural view and on a community view, I think there's another model that we can be served better. And I hope that you'll consider that. And thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.